Hello everyone, Darkovica here, and Tyranna Builder recently received a very large update which added the new system nodes. And this tutorial is basically going to explain how to use these nodes, at least in a very basic way, so that you may be able to learn how to apply them to your game. First things first, variables now have a variable manager, which you can find within the project dropdown. You can select this and it gives you your variable manager, which you can now see on the screen. You would type your variable name here, as I've typed, as you can see right here, and then you would click add, and it will add the variable below. You give it an initial value so that it has something added to it. This can be anything. You can make it 5, you can make it text, you can make it 250.7, I'm sure. But we're going to make it blank. That way I have a clue when I know that this variable is not working because I can tell that this name will never ever or should never have blank as its value. System variable refers to a type of variable that will never ever be rewritten. So let's say I do not select system variable. That means that anytime the player restarts a game, name, the variable name, will be set to blank every time, every single time. But if I set it as a system variable, the next time they play, system variable means that it will stay whatever they last set it, which could be Mike, which could be five, which could be how many times they've played. They put a very good example in the little window that pops up. It says, example, counting how many times the game has been cleared. That is important if you wanted to have secret endings for every time they've ever beat the game, or if you wanted it to just sort of add something to the title screen. I can display this later if you'd like, but for now we're going to focus on basics. So we have a name variable, and it is not a system variable. And we're going to go ahead and have this text here, which says, Hello, please enter your name. I hope you can read this all right. Now we're going to place an input box, and this is important because the input box works slightly awkwardly compared to everything else. You'll see that I've clicked the position tool to the far right, and I'm now positioning the input box. I'm going to accept this, and I'm going to pay attention to the Y position, because now we need a button. A button to so the player can select, you know, I'm done, and I would like this to be my variable, or rather my name. Now, it is important to note a branch button will not work. Tyranno Builder has, you know, the creators of Tyranno Builder have put this on their website. Branch buttons do not work. It needs to be an image button, which is difficult for people like me who are not artists. So our button is just going to be this frame <laughs> right here. So we're going to go ahead and position this. Now, you'll notice this is massive. That's because this is their special text box option you can use if you wanted to change the the um, text box for conversations and dialogue. Let's go ahead and accept this. It's, a, it's approximately in the right place. We're going to go ahead and make sure it's on the same Y axis. I've already forgotten the number. It was 257. All right, we'll make this. Oh, wow, it's very close. 257. All right, this is not the end. We have not, if I, if I were to save this, excuse me, and play this, nothing will happen. In fact, I'm pretty sure it will start right over. So it says, please enter your name. Oh, and we did not actually set what variable we want this to go to. You saw an error. This error means that the input box does not have a variable assigned to it. So that means we need to tell it to put whatever the player enters into that box to a variable. The assigned variable we're choosing is name, which we put into our variable manager. And now that that's there, this should work and you will see it fail in the other way that I was wanting it to fail. Now if we type something, whatever, and you click it, it's just going to restart the entire scene, which is not what we want this button to do. Now what we're going to do is make use of this stop right here that has already been placed in because this is a brand new project that I have only slightly edited. And we are going to tell it to commit the input, which is this, this input box. We need this commit and we are also going to place a, uh, we're going to use a Tyranno script node. Now, I do believe you can place code within these text boxes, but it sort of, it, it, it acts a little strange with it, and I, I do not like the way it responds with it. So I tend to use the Tyranno script node in order to display something. That does mean there's a little bit of coding here. We're going to, and this is going to sound a little funny, embed 
the variable that we have just created. So let's go ahead and we're going to type your name is open bracket EMB, which stands for embed, EXP, oops, which stands for expression, equals open quotation, double quotation. We're going to say F dot name, and that is Tyranno Builder's naming format. It will have an F dot name unless it is a system variable, in which case I believe, I think it is TF dot name. I, I'm afraid I don't know offhand. I can check if any of you would like me to. And now I'm going to close the bracket. I'm going to place a dot. I'm going to open another bracket and put a P and another bracket. And what that P means is that it is going to clear the text and only after I have clicked. Without that P, that text is going to appear and then disappear almost rapidly. All right, let's go ahead and play this. Now we have hello. Please enter your name. And I'm going to put Monica. I'm going to hit the button. And I forgot to tell it to go to our label, which I did not put. We need a label here to tell it to tell the button to basically, oh, I have a label. Oh, this was from earlier, and it's it's still thinking that that label exists, which is a bug, which I should probably inform them about. We're going to tell it to go to this label, which I've called commit one. So this button is now going to not just go back to the beginning of the level, but it's going to go to this label, which is very important. It's basically the same exact way that branching buttons work, except instead of a branch button, you now have an image button. All right, let's go ahead and play. It says, hello, please enter your name. So once again, we'll type Monica. We'll hit this button, and it says, your name is Monica. Ta-da! Now, you'll notice that this is still here, and that's kind of a problem if you wanted your game to not do that. So let's go ahead and add a page break after the commit. We'll put a page break here. Let's save. Saving is very important. And let's play one more time. It says, hello, please enter your name. We'll put M-O-N-I-C-A. Hit tab. And let's hit that. And it says, your name is Monica. And you'll notice that it disappeared, which is what we want. We don't want the, those boxes to stay there forever because that would be kind of destructive to your game. So now I have this variable that I can use at any given time. Oh, I clicked and it disappeared. That was the way P works. Without that P, just to give you an idea, if I were to play this, hello, please enter your name. I will type in Monica. Your name is Monica. Oh, and it stayed because I forgot that that is a new functionality that Tyranno Builder put in. It automatically does the pause. So you may not actually need P. That was an old, uh, that was an old built-in functionality mm -hmm. that they had. So P is no longer required. You do not need it. But embed expression means that name is now being used. Now let's say we wanted to have a variable in which a character's affections are being raised. Let's go ahead and create another variable. And let's say we'll call this um, M points. Right, so let's say, let's add this. We now have a value, a variable called endpoints, and we're going to give it the initial value of zero. Or actually, let's give it one. I mean, we want this person to sort of like us, right? This would be useful in a dating sim, this type of variable. We do not want this to be a system variable because that means whenever they start the game, they'll already have points in here, and we don't want that. So endpoints has been set. Let's go ahead and continue. Now, this Tyranno script node works pretty much exactly the same as the text node, except it doesn't do strange things that I'm, I'm not going to show you. You can try it, but you'll see what I mean. Uh, let's say, uh, oh, let's just, let's just, well, all right. Let's say M, M points, or yeah, M points is, and we're going to embed the expression again. So F dot M underscore points. And now let's go ahead and process a variable. So this means that we are going to add, or we're going to do something, some mathematical thing to a variable. So now that I've told process variable that the variable it is going to process is endpoints, we're going to say we want to add a value one. We're going to add one to endpoints. We're going to apply it. 
And now we're going to add another Tyranno script node and we're going to say m underscore points is embed expression f dot m underscore points. And we will see it change from one to two. So let's go ahead and play, you know, if it works. Hello, please enter your name. We'll type, I don't know, butts. That's professional, right? Your name is but ah, there we go. That's what I was expecting to happen. So you'll see the text all sort of ran into each other before it did this. So this is a situation in which we need a one or a P. So let's go ahead and put P here. And we don't need one here on the last line of text. I hope this is clear. The P is going to stop the next line of text from running into, like you saw, all of the text sort of smooshed itself into each other. This, oops. Oh. Oh, darn. I've accidentally deleted something. And the undo button did not undo what I wanted it to. Yeah, don't, don't press undo. All right, we need to embed this again. Uh, M points is embed expression F dot M underscore points. And we'll put a P just for, well, no, we don't need one. All right, now let's try this. Let's save it again, because it actually showed it incorrectly the first time. Please enter your name. We actually, well, that's a good thing to show. Let's actually start from here. We're going to preview from this node, which means that my name is blank because it hasn't been has nothing's been added to it yet. You'll notice that it's stopped here because of my p. M points is 1 uh 1.1. 1 .1. Hmm, what is Oh, because I I have a 1. That one is there because of this one over here that I don't know if you can see it. If I delete it, it will be fine. And I do actually need another P there. Interesting. So let's make sure we have all of those. And we're going to delete that one. Oop. Or save again. Let's play from here. Your name is blank. M points is one. Now this means we are at this point in time. So M points is one. Now it's going to process the variable. M points is two. So M points is now two. So there you go. That is the way to set up pretty much a dating sim where you have characters that have affection that needs to rise. So now they have uh, a, an affection variable that you can therefore match and see if they get the good ending or see if they get the bad ending, that sort of thing. I hope this has hands answered any questions that you may have had about the new system variables, which are very important, but can be done just using TyrannoScript. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to message me or post in the comments below. I will absolutely be happy to answer your questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.